الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who by his magnificence is veiled from the perception of the eyes and by his glory and might is exalted above the attainment of thoughts whose essence being unique is unlike the essence of created beings and whose qualities are far removed from the qualities of creatures born in time. High above is Allah from all likenesses, forms and opposites and by his marks and signs does he lead his creation to a knowledge of his unity. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all his noble prophets and messengers in particular the last of them all, the Chosen One, the Prince of the Prophets, Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First and foremost, my condolences to the family of the victims. Um, the last thing we would have expected is for something this evil and something this tragic, this terrorist attack to occur in beautiful New Zealand among such beautiful people. Um, as the Prime Minister Scott Morrison has said, uh, the people in New Zealand we consider as our family, as Australians, we consider not only those that are close to us, our neighbours, but our families, our family. And therefore, for such a tragic act to occur so callously in New Zealand was indeed a shock, not only for the Muslim world, but also the Western world as well particularly those lovely residents in New Zealand. Troubling times, a tragic event has occurred, certainly a dark day that will be remembered by everybody. The attack, however, was not so much on the, the, the direct victims. While they suffered most in, in that they've lost their lives, may their abode be paradise, the real attack, we don't sometimes think about the ramifications of our actions, we don't think through to any real degree what the repercussions will be. But the attack was on those sons and daughters, those children that will now, having expected their fathers to come home as they ordinarily would, be given the news that their fathers have and their mothers have departed from this finite temporary world and therefore the real tragedy here is that so many young ones will be now left as orphans without a mother and father to guide them through the troubling times in which we now reside so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them through this trouble give them patience allow them to persevere through what will be no doubt a very difficult life for them. And I ask my brothers and sisters in New Zealand to also be conscious of this reality and to know that the ultimate victims in this case were the children of those people that were shot in the mosque. What is even more shocking is that this attack occurred in New Zealand. The Muslims in New Zealand have nothing but good intentions for the rest of the community and people in New Zealand and therefore there are no extremist views, there's no hatred in their hearts and there's no ill intent for any community, me community member in New Zealand. Often we are measured by, often we measure ourselves, our character and our conduct our level of spirituality, when everything is easy, when everything is going well. But a manner in which we can truly ascertain our value, truly ascertain who we are, measure ourselves, is in moments such as this, is in moments of crises and difficulty such as this. And therefore, I ask my Muslim brothers and sisters, to be patient through this trial, to truly understand that reacting on emotion, reacting on hatred and anger will never benefit anybody, particularly the self. So we must ensure that we react in a manner that is beautiful. God Almighty says in the Quran, nor can good and evil ever be equal. 
Evil can never be equal to good. Repel evil with what is better. Repel evil with what is better. If someone is cold towards you, be soft towards them. If someone is unforgiving, be forgiving. If someone shows hatred, show other than hatred. Be warm and inviting to them. This is the meaning of this verse. Then Allah continues and says, Then will you find between whom and you was enmity and hatred becomes your friend and intimate. The ultimate goal is to win the hearts. The ultimate goal is to unite hearts, not to disunite them. The Prophet, peace upon him, came as rahmat alameen, as a mercy to mankind, as a mercy to the world. And he came to unite hearts, not to disunite them. We must understand also that if there, are other, if there are people out there that have no idea as to the nature of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as to who he was as an individual, caring so much for humanity, he cared so much for humanity, their state of being, their state in this world, their state in the next world, he, had, oh, he was overly conscious about their well-being, overly conscious about well-being, the well-being of humanity in general. And so we must understand that this was the Prophet, peace be upon him, somebody that faced so much calamity for 13 years. They would torture and abuse his people. For many years thereafter, they would embark upon warfare and so forth, again trying to bring difficulty upon him. And finally, when the Muslims, after so many years of suffering, had the upper hand and were marching towards Mecca, there was one amongst them that said, finally, we will have our retaliation. Finally, we will have retribution. Finally, we will make these Meccans pay for what they have done. And the Prophet, والسلام, upon hearing this, upon hearing that that day was the Malhamah, that day was the day in which blood could reign free. He says, this is not the day of retribution. Yawm, yawm al-marhama. This is the day of mercy. This is the day, in essence, when the Meccans will be made great. And rather than having retribution, he opened his arms and he invited everybody into his fold, into his community. Similar story with uh, what happened at Taif, even though the kids, the people, the slaves were released to stone him and his blessed self was full of blood. He makes dua, he makes dua for the people of Taif, and as a result of that dua, so many scholars emerged from Taif. And therefore we must make dua in this situation, dua for the family of the victims, dua for the people of New Zealand in general, because they will certainly, they will certainly all be affected by this tragic turn of events. Again, we need to be patient, not to react with violence, rather something that is far more beneficial, in particular to the Muslim world. We need to use situations such as this to do our utmost. We need to use situations such as this to do our utmost to illustrate to the world, to illustrate to the rest of the world who the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was. What Islam is truly about, the beauty that is Islam, that it is, a it is a religion that promotes care, consideration, love, compassion, kindness, and that our Lord is a Lord that wants what is best for humanity. Our Lord is a loving, nurturing Lord that wants what is best for humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us through these troubling times and may he allow us to become a tool and agent that would rid, that will rid, that will rid such hatred from the hearts of human beings that will allow us to be a benefit to the world around us and not a detriment. That he must, that he, may he remind us that every human being has the right to exist. Every creature, in fact, has the right to exist. Every creature has the God-given right 
to exist. Every human being, innocent human being, has the right to exist, given by God. And we must pay heed to that right, and we must respect that right. We do not have the right to take away the life of any living creature. So may God Almighty allow us to overcome this difficult, this difficult, tragic day, and may He allow us to be motivated to ensure that we remove this hatred from each other's hearts, so that we may make this world in unison, that we may.